All right, so I can barely win a World Series with one team, so why not try to do it with two? And that's what we're going to do today. The Orioles and the Marlins, two of the worst teams in baseball. And I know technically in the AL, the Tigers are worse than the Orioles this year, but I feel like the Orioles have become such a meme team that let's do it with the Orioles instead of the Tigers. So we're going to do the Orioles and the Marlins. So if you guys want to see some more rebuild challenges like this, hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And as always, in the comment section, let me know future rebuilds or rebuild challenges you would like to see. Again, guys, if you go to SeatGeek, you need tickets for anything, anything. Use the code ANTORTIS, get $20 off your purchase. So a two-team rebuild, two of the worst teams in baseball. I, I don't know what I'm thinking. So really the only thing that changes when you do two teams is i mean you select both the teams you want obviously we're doing the orioles and the marlins contracts are locked like they actually do stay on everything else is going to be left alone there's going to be no fantasy draft no funny business with forced trades or budgets are on budgets are on and then you just hit manual for everything because that's what we do we control everything we go into the regular season and then when you want to switch between your two teams you just hit r2 or L2. That's that's literally how you switch between your two teams. That's really about it. Otherwise, it's going to be the same rebuild as normal. So let's let's start with the Orioles. Let's take a look, see what we're doing. We are using the most recent riding rosters. Um, so that's username riding roster. Go check it out. All right, looking at this team, it's pretty bad. Like, I I don't really know what to do with this. I don't. I kind of have a feeling we need to blow up the farm system. I know the Orioles don't really have a good farm system, but I feel like that's kind of like what we're going to have to do is trade anybody that has some value and try to get better players who can help us right now. Because I want to try to do this as quickly as possible, especially since GM contracts are on. I feel like we have a three year like time span to try to turn this team around. So I'm thinking, you know, Cedric Mullins. He doesn't hit the ball well. Let's see if we can trade him for someone better. You know, something like that. So Trey Mancini is really the only player in this team I'm cool with keeping. Maybe Renato Nunez. Jonathan Villar, I don't know. I'll probably trade him because he does have some trade value. Pedro Severino is not a bad catcher for now. But again, we do have Adley Rutschman who could potentially, you know, hop into that spot. But overall, I'm not really keen on keeping anybody here john means is it hit or miss for a pitcher so we're kind of at a weird spot where we need to find a way to get this team a lot better switch teams let's go to the rosters now so when we look at the roster for the marlin i feel like the marlins are in a little bit better place the thing with their pitchers are again they're very hit or miss they either do very very well or they do very very poorly bullpen is atrocious you got Wei Yin chen making what 13 million a year we need to get rid of that Closing pitcher, not a true closing pitcher. Stecken Rider, I feel like, is more of a setup guy, maybe a middle relief guy. So we need a new closing pitcher. Jorge Alfaro, as long as he hits the ball well, we'll keep him. If not, we're going to have to definitely find a new catcher. First base, maybe Lewin Diaz in three years, but we'll have to wait and see. I want to try to get Asan Diaz involved, but we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Brian Anderson, if he continues to do well, we'll keep him. If not, he has amazing trade value, and we could probably get you know, two players that could start for us right away, uh, just for Brian uh, Anderson. Shortstop, I would love to get Ch Ch Jazz Chisholm involved, but I don't think it's going to happen. He might have to be a trade piece to get a real shortstop. Left field, Curtis Granderson is going to just tank in overall, so we're going to have to find a, a left fielder that's not Harold Ramirez. He's hit or miss. He either does really well or really bad. JT Riddle, Lewis Brinson, they're not center fielders that I want starting. And then we got Garrett Cooper and Wright, who, again, I don't really think I want starting. I know he's more of a first baseman now, but I feel like we can definitely get a new right fielder. There's JJ, and if we were doing a long-term rebuild, I would definitely want him to try to get involved, but we don't have that time. We got three years. This is going to be a challenge. So let's start with the orioles let's start doing some trades i'll show you guys along the way what we do so the first trade i'm going to do is i want chris davis's contract out like i don't want his disgusting contract here anymore so we're going to trade him cedric mullins and hunter harvey for george springer Aledmiz diaz and aaron sanchez i feel like this helps us get a decent pitcher for now he's okay he's we'll see how it goes Aledmiz diaz can either play second or short for us and then center field is obviously going to be taken by george springer now all right, again, I don't really want Alex Cobb's contract. 14 million is just too much. We're going to trade him, Carlos Perez, and Luis Ortiz, who that's kind of the, the main piece of this trade. He's just, he actually doesn't look bad for the future, but again, 
I don't think we're going to use him. We're going to trade him for Garrett Richards of the Padres. He's only in this because he gets the trade done. And then this is the one I really want. Andres Munoz, 20-year-old, 73 overall with B potential. Decent stamina. His per nines are already really, really good. And I've seen this guy turn into like a 90 plus player in just like three seasons. So I want to see if he actually does well for us. But I think this is a decent little bullpen arm for us. All right, I'm going to trade for Armand Marquez of the Rockies. I know there's a little bit left over. Oh, I guess I should have told you we're switching over to the Marlins. I've made a couple of trades with the Orioles. I feel like for season one, it kind of gets me in an okay, pos okay position. With the Marlins though... I want to try to get a little bit stronger pitching, and I feel like that's kind of an issue with the Marlins. And we're gonna we're gonna move uh, Wei Yin Chen and his horrible contract, along with the dirty, dirty pitcher of Jose Arena. We're gonna do that, and Monte Harrison, who's kind of the big piece of this trade for Herman Marquez, a decent starting pitcher with a contract that you know goes for a couple years. So we'll have him for six years. I mean, that's that's a decent contract, seven and a half million a year. I like that. Alrighty, we're bringing Brad Hand back to the Marlins. Yes, you heard me right. He used to be part of the Marlins system. He actually was a starter, and he was a failed starter, so that's why they shipped him away. So now, as a closer, he's got, he's coming back to Miami. He's coming back to the Miami for Jose Devers, Curtis Granderson, and I know he's he's looking like a bit of a starlet for the Marlins in the pitching rotation. But Jordan Yamamoto, his per nines are just not good enough for us to win right now. So we're gonna trade him. For a good closer call me crazy but i'm gonna pick up another third baseman along with jorge polanco from the twins we're going to and polanco for jazz chisel starlin castro and neil walker my idea is isan diaz can move into that second base spot jazz chisel as much as i would love to see him feature in this rebuild i just don't think he's going to in time like develop in time so it gives us a good starting shortstop in jorge polanco we're gonna move sano to first and then we can keep anderson at third and like I said, Asan Diaz is going to be our second baseman. All right, so you guys always tell me not to trade for the same players. But I need players that I know are going to do well. Dylan Floro is one of them. And we're kind of on a short leash. We only have three years to do this. So Dylan Floro and the lefty Scott Alexander are going to help us kind of solidify this bullpen for the Marlins. For Tyler Kinley, Brett Graves, and then Cameron Misner. Meisner? Whatever it is. No, I accidentally backed out of the trade. Well, there's the trade, guys. I'm going to go redo it. Alrighty, all trades are done for season one. I know it's a lot to handle. I'm going to try to keep it as, like, clear-cut who's who and what's what. So today, right now, we're going to look at the Marlins. Um, Lineup-wise, this is what we're working with to start season one. Is San Diaz being the lowest-rated player, but I have a feeling he'll kind of start to develop a little bit quicker. Actually, what we'll do is we'll move we'll move uh alfaro a actually we could probably move sano up a little bit in the lineup i think we should probably have the power there um i think we missed it in one spot nope we're good right there so basically this is what we're rocking with we got ramirez polanco brian anderson cooper sano diaz alfaro puelo and marquez on the bench we got quite a few bats um just to kind of rotate if necessary prado rojas dean wallach or wallach and then riddle I'm not too sure about Riddle. I know he's got a decent amount of trade value, so I probably should trade him while I can, maybe at the deadline. And then when we look at our starting rotation, Marquez, Smith, Alcantara, Lopez, and Hernandez, I'm not very confident at all. But for right now, we're going to give him a shot. We'll definitely, we're, we're most likely going to have to make some moves. I'm actually going to switch Second Rider and Floro. Second Rider does have a decent amount of clutch and like decent per nines but floro is just a little bit better in that setup role so we got hand floro stanick alexander guerrero second rider and conley so that's how we're going to set up for season one or the first half of season one with the marlins when we take a look at the orioles um i feel like we we, we strengthened the squad a little bit you know um dylan bundy being our worst starting pitcher we got Sanchez, Richard, Genoa, Means, and Bundy. The bullpen's the big question mark. I didn't really address much in here. Uh, I mean, when you even look at our farm system, it's not really strong either. I'm going to see how things go. A lot of the bullpen arms for the Marlins are really hit or miss. Sometimes they do really well. So we might have a little bit of a gem there. The lineup, though, I think we strengthen it a little bit. Aledmus Diaz and George Springer really help a lot. And we have Jonathan VR, who I think is going to hold his rating. I think he'll go up a little bit in potential, and I think that's going to help us. I do want Severino starting instead of Chance Cisco. But other than that, I think we have a decent little squad like starting to form here. If necessary, we could also get, you know, another trade piece. We do have quite a few high-rated pitch or highly high potential pitchers that we could trade. So that's the Orioles. We've already looked at the Marlins. I'll see you guys at trade deadline day.
So I said, let's go to the trade deadline, but I completely forgot about the draft. And the draft, I'm only going to feature for one season because I feel like after this season, it's going to be pretty tough to find players who are going to be usable in you know season two or season three. So since we have such a short leash to not get fired, let's focus on season one's draft. Looking at it, season one actually went pretty good for the Orioles. We have a 98 potential player, a first baseman, who's actually got decent arm strength and decent fielding. Potentially move him to the outfield, maybe like left field um good vision discipline he's 61 overall so i don't even know if he'll feature but overall he could be actually a pretty good trade piece maybe this uh trade deadline of season two when he has his full value another player that we drafted was keith mares catcher actually looks decent as well another player that for a long-term rebuild would be really good potentially another trade piece and then again will cherry 51 overall kind of kind of a dis like it sucks that he's 51 overall because i know he's not going to be worth much when we look at the marlins we got a 99 potential player enrique moreno 64 overall good speed not the best of fielders but he's got some power i mean that's not too bad um it looks like the marlins draft went a little bit better you know stephen harris 74 overall b potential left fielder potentially a player i might get involved right away or I don't like the plate discipline and plate vision. I think he might be a player we trade because he'll have decent value and we could probably get someone that's a little bit higher rated and MLB ready right away. If not, we could always use Steven Harris. I think, you know, he's a he's a player who when you compare him to our other left fielders could feature right away. We got Chris Zavala, 54 overall, 81 potential. And then we got Roger Isaacs, a 51 overall right fielder 78 potential and then we got a couple other guys who i mean they're they're okay 69 overall is not bad but he's got 67 potential 61 overall 59 overall so i mean they're not terrible we'll sign up these guys but i feel like the marlins did a little bit better than the orioles so at the deadline both teams need a little bit of help so season one at the deadline i'm going to trade away some players whose contracts are expiring and are doing pretty poorly just to kind of help out these teams just a little bit so we're going to start with the orioles here so the orioles to start we're going to go to the pirates for the first trade we're going to be acquiring at trevor williams who's a 78 overall he's actually playing down because of his morale he's actually struggling a little bit this year but you can see so are the pirates um and i feel like once we get him back on track he'll definitely be a very good pitcher for us going forward we're gonna be training angel vielma and two pitchers that are really struggling this year and gabriel yanoa who's got a 6.1 era along with a whip at 1.56 and then we're also gonna be trading aaron brooks another player who's just not doing too well so we're getting a new starting pitcher who i think will really help us out all right now we're gonna swap over to the marlins i know only one trade for the orioles but i felt like strengthening the starting pitching would be a little bit better the issue now with the Marlins is their bullpen. That's the big thing here. All right, so we're going to be picking up Shane Carl from the uh, Rangers. Rangers. Uh, his stats aren't amazing. Like his Ks and walks per nine are pretty bad, but his home runs and hits per nine are pretty solid. Clutch and control are high as well. He's having a phenomenal year this year. He'll probably only get better as well. We're going to trade Connor Scott and then Tyrone Guerrero and Harlan Garcia, two older, low-rated relievers. I think this is going to be a decent little bullpen arm. All right, we're going for a starting pitcher, Sandy Alcantara, and then Sixto Sanchez are kind of the big pieces. You can see Alcantara is struggling a lot this year. And when you look at his per nines, I just don't know if he's really going to be able to develop into a pitcher we're going to use. Sixto Sanchez, another player I would love to use in this rebuild. I just don't think he's going to be ready by the time we hit like season three. So we're going to train him for Mike Clevenger of the Indians, who his stats look unreal. And then when you look at his season, he's having an even better year. So those are the two trades. I know the the Orioles seem like they're kind of getting left out of the big money moves, but I have some ideas for them going forward. So I didn't want to make too drastic of moves, kind of leave me short on salary space or anything like that. So my moves are kind of suited more towards free agency and then trades in like next season rather than trades right now. So let's see how the rest of the season plays out. And I'll catch you guys once the year's over. All right. So both teams kind of flip spots because the Marlins were the better team at the deadline and now when you see the ending like the end records for both teams it's gonna it's gonna shock you the Orioles won 85 and 77 so it looks like the moves that we made because at the deadline they were 50 and 58 I think it was and you guys can see the the Marlins didn't finish too bad 78 and 84 so let's let's take a look and see how the the Orioles finished 13 games out and I mean I can't I can't think they were too far out in the wild card six games out 
isn't bad at all so i'm definitely interested to see how things played out for them when we look at the marlins they were 16 out in their division and seven and a half in the wild card so both teams are just kind of like this far out on the the wild card so i'm kind of interested to see how things you know how we could get them in there with a couple moves so let's take a look at the pitching rotation and ron marquez is only going to get better and the fact that we have him locked up for a contract i like that good a decent year decent year 1.24 whip 345 era pretty pretty crazy era right um i like that pablo lopez is actually almost identical a 346 era 1.28 whip all right i'm excited about our one two punch with pitchers clevenger needs to get up there oh that might have been an issue too but i mean if clevenger can do this every single year i think maybe our marquez clevenger uh lopez one two three punch could be pretty solid uh caleb smith struggled a little bit i'll probably bring him back and trade him it, it kind of seems like that happens every year for some reason he just doesn't do well and then hernandez sub four era 1.45 whip probably going to be our five starter but not too bad and then when you look at our farm system it's kind of lackluster i did send down i lied i lied i didn't bring anybody up or send anybody down um julian fernandez is a player i'm probably going to trade uh, he just never really does well in the majors. Conley, probably a one-year guy. If we bring him back, he'll be a trade piece in the future. Steckenrider struggled a little bit, which is unfortunate. Carl struggled a little bit. Unfortunate. That whip is really high. Scott Alexander. Oh, no. He didn't pan out. That is disappointing, to say the least. Stanek is okay, but it seems like he's going down, which I don't really understand why. So... Um, we'll, we'll sign, we'll bring them back and then probably trade them if that's going to be the case. Floro, very, very good in this holding spot, this setup role. Um, I like to see that. And Brad Hand, very good whip. Okay, I like that. I like to see that a lot. We have our closer, which is good. He only blew three saves. I like to see that. So let's take a look at the lineup really, really quickly. Season one's kind of a, a feel out season, and they actually went a lot better than I anticipated. I was expecting maybe like 50 win seasons, 60 win seasons. Jorge Polanco is always a good pickup for a shortstop if you ever need one. Brian Anderson, little disappointing. And to be honest, I'll give him one more year. If not, season three, he is out the door and we're going to get someone good in return. Miguel Sano, 35 home runs, 101 RBIs. Solid. Um, I'll check his home runs. 23 home runs. Okay, 76 RBIs. Maybe I was a little bit too harsh on Brian Anderson. It's just that average is a little low. The OPS is a little low. I want a little bit better. I want to see closer to 30 home runs. Um, but we'll see we'll see um let's look at alfaro alfaro very good year isan diaz learning learning still but i definitely want him to be you know a key piece in this rebuild and then actually jt riddle surprised me potential's gone down and that's usually what happens with jt riddle so we might trade him while he has a little bit of value and then our bench was okay um we'll take a look at the farm system really quick um okay 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 bladez up to a 67 sanchez is a 70 oh okay um maybe by see and lewin diaz is a 73 oh wow we might have uh pieces to work with for season three um that that changes some things so now we're gonna hop over to the orioles yes the orioles because something changed with them we we must have had a, a a crazy good season so garrett richards i probably won't keep him i'll probably trade him but overall i'm not disappointed in the season that he gave us aaron sanchez another player i'll probably end up trading but we'll see he could these two could potentially be our four and fives depending how things go trevor williams usually does really well and i'm kind of disappointed with how he did john means overall pretty disappointed with the starting pitching tanner scott looks to be our long reliever um for half of the season he was like in the section that's under the closing pitchers so he didn't feature at all for the first half of the year i don't know why he was under that section but um, if you guys didn't know, if you have too many relievers that you can like scroll under the closing pitcher and there'll still be slots there. So for some reason he was in that section and it's a good thing we brought him up because he had a really good second half of the season. Sean Gil Martin was a little lackluster. Miguel Castro pitched above his ability. Um, I don't think he'll do that next year, but I'll take it. Paul Fry was a little, little disappointing. The whip's actually pretty good. Just the ERA is kind of high. Dylan Tate, we brought him up, and he pitched way above his ability. For some reason, he's angry. He wants to be the closer. You are not the closer. Sorry, bud. Um, if you can be cool with being a middle relief guy, I think we have a little bit of a, like a, a nice little piece there. Richard Blyer looks really good in that long or that setup role, and then it looks like Michael Givens is doing very good 
in the save spot. 53 saves, four blown. Solid. All right, lineup wise, Severino was very disappointing this year. I kicked him out. Steve Wilkerson's looking like a decent bench bat for us. 14 home runs, 49 RBIs. Okay, I will take that for sure. Hanser Alberto, meh. Um, Jonathan VR, 21 home runs is definitely not bad for a second baseman. 36 doubles, too. Okay, we might have to keep him. Aledmis Diaz might be our shortstop. 25 home runs, 90 RBIs. I think we found a little shortstop who's kind of easy to acquire from the Astros. George Springer, 34 home runs. Okay. Trey Mancini. I mean, I feel like we got shortstop center and left field sorted right there. Boom, boom, boom. Mark Trumbo. Not terrible. Not terrible at all. You know, an aging first baseman. I'll take that. Rio Ruiz, Chancisco, Renato Nunez. So it's like the six, six through nine spot for the, the DH and stuff like that probably needs a little bit of help. I want to see where Rutschman is up to his 72. I'll probably feature him season three. I don't want to get him involved too early. Richie Martin just doesn't hit the ball, so he might be a trade piece going forward. Austin wins is okay. Uh, DJ Stewart is probably a little bit higher. No, so I'll probably trade him too. So we got some trade pieces. We definitely got some trade pieces. Pretty happy with the way the season's played out. I was expecting a lot worse. You guys get the gist there. So... I'm not bringing back either of these guys. I feel like we could get um, some good pieces for other, like un, that are a little bit cheaper or even better. For the 40 man, I'm not really interested in either, like any of these guys. Maybe Austin Bryce for the Marlins. Arbitration wise, um, maybe not these guys. Maybe not those guys. Looking at the Marlins. Mm, I don't think we're going to bring them back these two, but I think the rest will be brought back for sure. And then contracts wise, we definitely want to bring back everybody here. Yeah, I feel like most of these guys are going to get contracts. And then looking at the Orioles, um, yeah, I feel like the same thing. I think we're going to get um, contracts for these guys. I sent down Andres Munoz because he struggled a lot this year. Um, so maybe sending him to the sending him to AAA for like half a season would help out. So that is that. Let me get all this offseason business done. I'll see you guys at the start of season two. All right, so both teams, I made a couple splashes in free agency, and I'm excited to show you guys. But first, we're going to make a couple trades. Just kidding. I'm going to show you guys the lineup. So let's take a look. Let's show you what we're working with. Nicholas Castellanos is going to be playing right field for us, and that was really the only change that I made to the lineup for the Marlins. Um... I didn't want to take any Rule 5 players for the Marlins, but the CPU does what it does sometimes, and they gave us a catcher. Probably going to trade them, so there's that. When I looked at our bullpen, um, it looked like Conley was kind of a weak link. I did end up bringing him back, but then I saw Ross Stripling in the Rule 5 draft, and I was like, ooh, that's a decent little long reliever for at least one season, right? And then I realized we don't have any lefties. So Shane Carl did struggle a little bit, and... His stats are decent, and I kind of want to give him another shot. Ryan Stanek's a player where I'm like, oh, do I keep him? Do I trade him? I'm kind of torn between the two. I'm kind of looking at their contracts. Their own Stanek's a little bit higher. I'm going to trade one of these two to get a lefty. We brought in Betances, who I think is going to help us up, help us out even more. So getting a lefty, when you look at our starting rotation, we added Dallas Keuchel for, I think, one season. Just one season. So starting rotation got stronger bullpen got stronger we added nicholas castellanos we're gonna make a couple of trades to really strengthen this bullpen and also a couple of weak spots in the lineup really um second base is a question mark center field i definitely want to find a new center fielder especially since we have like four right fielders on the starting lineup already so um when you look at our our bench or our what's it called farm system that's what it's called we got moreno we got sierra we got jj we got Lewis Brinson, Steven Harris, who we drafted. We got a lot of good players. Loan Diaz is there. Jesus Sanchez, Victor, Victor Mesa. I think we're set. Like we have a lot of good players coming up who could feature next year. Pitching wise, we're not as strong, but I feel like our MLB like pitching staff is pretty solid already. So now hop over to the, the Orioles. I feel like the Orioles, we definitely made some decent pickups. Garrett Cole being one of them. Uh, I think he's definitely going to help that starting rotation. I do want to find probably a replacement for somebody probably garrett richards um maybe even a long reliever maybe that could be in the cards i don't know if dylan bundy's really set for this role um 
Wait, that's a lie. We have Tanner Scott for this role, so probably just get rid of Dylan Bundy. Maybe find a bench bat because overall, I'm I'm kind of excited to see how this bullpen does. I felt like the bullpen wasn't too bad for the Orioles last year, and then we just find that bench bat like I talked about because when you look at our starting lineup, it's actually pretty solid. We brought in Marcelo Zuna to play right field. I know he's not naturally a right fielder, but he was one of the better player of players available, and I feel like that works. We also brought in Jose Abreu, and then when you look at the team, catcher is a bit of an issue, but we do have Adley Rutschman, who I think could potentially be a season three starter, so I didn't really want to go out and pay big money for a catcher. Um, and then our bench bats are okay. They're nothing too special, but overall, again, I feel like we've strengthened the team. Third base is a little bit of a question mark. Renato Nunez should still continue to grow, so realistically, it's just the catcher position that would be a question mark. Maybe the DH, so maybe a little bit of bench power is something we could go out for so overall i feel like we made the team stronger orioles i'm gonna be looking for a power bat marlins i'm gonna be looking for a lefty reliever all right so i did say i was looking for a little bit of power and we're gonna go for a lefty because we are missing a lefty bat with some power we're gonna go to jake lamb of the diamondbacks we're also getting rid of dylan bundy who a player i was looking to remove anyways so it's kind of a decent little swap for us Alrighty, for the marlins we're bringing in a lefty with alex claudio had a pretty solid year last year i like the looks of his stats his home runs and walks per nines are really high his clutch as well we're trading garrett cooper and eliezer hernandez two players i don't plan on using this year so there's our lefty so jt riddle mcnura sierra and riley mayan are going to be making way for Ketel Marte, who's actually going to be our new center fielder i completely forgot we had jt riddle in center field so i did my my uh my typical search through free agencies right uh free agency it's free agency and you know I'm, I'm like okay maybe we'll find someone that we could throw in the farm system um looks like a decent like young prospect like miguel salas see potential not bad i saw this first baseman right quinton abraham i was like oh he's 72 overall i'm expecting a d potential b potential 72 overall with 20 a uh, 20 year old decent hitting stats too we do need one for the orioles for the maybe the future maybe next year we may have found that piece that we need. So I just wanted to give you that quick update before we started the season. Now I'll see you guys at trade deadline day. All right, I don't know what happened, but uh, these teams are unreal. So we're going to take a look at them at the deadline really, really fast. I don't think I'm going to make any changes. This is what the Orioles are looking like. They're first in the East, 64 and 47. I'm going to look at the wild card just to kind of give it, get an idea. Even if they get the wild, even if they fall out of first in the East, they have a quite quite a big lead in the wild card um we'll take a look at the marlins as well they're one game apart like that's a one game difference between the two teams 63 and 46 i would assume that's the yeah that's the number one spot in the wild card holy cow i didn't do anything with the draft i had the cpu handle it you guys can see the draft here i'll probably end up signing one or two players based on you know who's you know just based on overall and stuff just to kind of fill the roster a little bit all right we're going for one of my favorites Luis Castillo he's got arbitration for at least one more year so we're we're set with the starting pitching um I did say I wanted to find a bullpen arm for the Orioles but overall I think we'll be okay we're gonna bring back Luis or we're gonna bring in Luis Castillo maybe just strengthen the starting pitching and then the bullpen doesn't have to pitch as much that's kind of my thinking at this point so that's the move for the orioles let's find that move for the marlins all right and for the marlins i found two bullpen arms um and when i was looking at it stanic and floral were having a bad year which is a little disappointing floral is usually very consistent for us and we're gonna trade enrique moreno if this was a long-term rebuild where we weren't trying to win right now i would totally keep him he looks really good he's up to a 67 already this season but we have Jesus Sanchez and Steven Harris as well. So I feel like letting him go is not the worst thing we could do. Um, I just feel like we're, we're okay for right now. We're going to go for Mirandi Gonzalez, who for the few, maybe next season, if we need a bullpen arm. But Jordan Hicks is going to be one of our players we'll be acquiring. And John Brebby is going to be another one. Look at those stats. He looks really solid this season. I have a feeling he's going to be very good for us in the bullpen along with Jordan Hicks. I feel like we got two really good arms here. All right, so I've seen the Orioles record, but I haven't seen the Marlins. So it's gonna be a little bit of a surprise for both of us. I guess it's more than two of us, but anyways. So the Orioles, they made, the, they won the division, 92 and 70. There was a streak there. I was a little worried that we were gonna blow, blow it, but the Marlins, they made the postseason as a wild card, 95 and 67. So it looks like the East was a little bit tougher, but look at this start to August. Yeah, it was, we, we had a little bit of a, a, a tough start. I was like, oh no, we might we might not make it. 
but luckily for us, we won the division. We'll take a look at the standings for the Orioles. We won it by a game. Would we have made the wild card? Oh yeah, we would have won the wild card as well. Um, it looks like we have some league leaders. Garrett Cole. And then awards. Jose Abreu was a gold glover. So let's take a look at the team for the Orioles. See how they played out. Garrett Cole was solid. Low whip. Good ERA. The wins and losses aren't there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with what he did. High strikeout numbers. It looks like we got a solid pitcher going forward. Same with Luis Castillo. I feel like our our pitching is going to be our key key piece for this Orioles team. 8-9 and nine on the year. A good ERA. A very good whip. I like that. Trevor Williams came back after what he did last year and had a solid season. Good wins. Good losses. ERA is good. Whip. Solid. So I like to see that as well. John Means had a very good second half. It looks like we've got a solid 3 or 4. Maybe another 5 if we strengthen this team a little bit more. Garrett Richards. Probably the worst out of them but as a five i'm still pretty happy with what he did this may be a, a player that we bring back if we need to just because he might be a decent little five who's cheap tanner scott struggled a little bit paul fry did too gil martin very good especially with what he did last year he basically halved his era i like to see that a lot Munoz struggled a little bit so he's not really turning into the player i was hoping he would have but I'm gonna I'm gonna see how he does next year as well. Oh wow, Nate Carnes. Definitely not gonna rely on him at all during the postseason. Steve Ciszek was decent. Steve Richard actually he was he was really good. Richard Blyer was very good. And Michael Givens is a amazing closer. We're gonna have to bring him back somehow. When we look at the lineup, VR, 26 home runs, 85 RBIs, perfect. Almost the same for Aled Miss Diaz. One, two. We're looking really good right here. George Springer good year i'm um, pretty sure he's a free agent this year i'm i'll see what's available but i think we'll have to bring him back trey mancini's maybe our first baseman um maybe our first baseman it depends on what's available in free agency we also have dwight smith who could play left field for us or maybe even put him in right move marcelo zuna back to left mancini to first and we might be in business. I mean, Jose Abreu did have a good year, though. So I don't know if it's really necessary. We even could put Dwight Smith in center and let George Springer go. I mean, the, the options are endless at this point. Jake Lamb really didn't pan out to be what I was hoping he was going to be, which is unfor unfortunate. Renato Nunez, a very good year for him. Chancisco, not terrible. It's just that average was low. And when we look at some of the players we have coming up in the system, we still have Richie Martin, who is not going to overtake Alenmis Diaz. Alenmis Diaz has been way too good for us at the shortstop position. We have Mount Castle, who I'm not sure about just yet, but he might be a bench bat for us. Um, we also have Rutschman. So we do have players. We have Quinton Abraham as well, who could potentially be a bench bat. Uh, we, we definitely have plenty of options that i'm gonna have to think about this off season so let's take a look at the marlins see how things went for them they obviously made the postseason clevenger not as good as i would have hoped so he might be a player that i trade or maybe just had a bad season and we'll see how he bounces back or man marquez solid dallas keichel very you know i mean that's not bad one year i might have to bring him back next year as well caleb smith had a bounce back season and pablo lopez was probably our best pitcher this entire year Ross Stripling, solid for that long relief role. Will I bring him back? I'm not too sure. Um, I don't know who we could bring up instead. Maybe Adam Conley, but I'm not really confident in him. We do have Julian Fernandez who continues to go up in rating, but who knows? Shane Carl, the whip is really high, and that's the one thing that worries me about him. Jordan Hicks was lights out. Holy cow. Steckenrider was decent. The whip's a little high. That worries me. John Brebbia was very good. Dylan Batances struggled a little bit in the second half. Alex Claudio was lights out. And then Brad Hand, I might let go. Maybe we move maybe Jordan Hicks to this closing spot. And we just find a, a bullpen arm that we could stick in to fit. Or maybe even Randy Gonzalez is that player that slides into that, that spot. Lineup wise, looking at the bench, pretty lackluster. But we definitely have names that could come up. Steven Harris is one of those you can see he played a little bit in september nothing too crazy we have peter o'brien we also do have lewin diaz jesus sanchez both look like they're plenty good to come up to at least be bench bats so i think we definitely have options there let's actually look at the mlb roster though Cattell Marte, amazing year 32 homers 85 rbis as the leadoff guy with the 300 average oof did i say 46 doubles it said 46 doubles 
I'll take that from the leadoff guy. Jorge Polanco, same thing. Very good. Good amount of doubles, home runs, RBIs, average, everything. Really nice. Castellanos, amazing. Great pickup. 49 doubles and almost 40 home runs and 130 RBIs. Okay. Miguel Sano, I'll take that for my first baseman any day. Brian Anderson, I like to see that. He bumped up the average OPS, slugging, and uh, on base percentage. Home runs and RBIs were still about the same, but he did, you know, add some more doubles. So I'll take that from the third baseman. Alfaro, solid. Puelo, meh. Isan Diaz is getting better. I mean, 21 home runs. Okay, double your home runs in one season. I like it. And Harold Ramirez might be moving to the bench. You know, Jesus Sanchez is right behind him. We also have Steven Harris with some definite pop and good fielding. So who knows? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. So let's see how the postseason plays out. It's going to be kind of difficult to manage both teams. Um, this is not what I thought about. So let's start with the Marlins since they are a wild card team and they lost four to 12. I didn't want to control it just because I don't want to sit here all year trying to quick manage every game, but let's see how they do, how the Orioles now do against the twins and they sweep the twins. Okay. So let's get the lineup all sorted. Let's get our, our starters where they need to be. It looks like everybody, but okay, Trevor Williams struggled a little bit, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks like things are going. Orioles, Athletics, and we're off to a hot start again, and we need to win this game. We don't, so, all right, elimination game to move on to the World Series. We need to win this. Ricky Henderson Field, we're going to have Luis Castillo take them on, who's got a .6 ERA in the postseason. And looking at, oh, Frankie Montas on the mound. First and second for Osuna. Can't do anything. Looking at their team. Um, Dickerson's a new name. Duvall's a new name. Rogers is a new name. But overall, I mean, for the most part, it's a pretty standard athletic squad. We just got... I, I feel like we need to score early in this game. If we don't, I think we're going to have some trouble. So let's uh, let's not do that. We need to get those runs back quickly. So we're down 3-0. Come on. It's Frankie Montas. It's not like it's the ace of the world here and we're struggling we're struggling they have eight hits we only have three our offense has really gone quiet so let miss diaz come on we gotta do something here castillo is going to be done after that inning seventh inning osuna come on guys um let's go to let's go to c-check he's been one of our consistent arms as i say that he lets me down like crazy, Gil Martin comes in, gets the double play, we're out of it. Perfect. They bring in the lefty, Chancing. Ooh, Chancisco singles. VR brings in one. Okay. <sighs> we're down three still. We're down three. First and second, no outs. Come on. George Springer and then Trey Mancini. That's what I'm talking about. That is huge. Alright. Um. Oh boy. Uh Munoz, come on, bud. Oh, Andres Munoz comes in in the clutch. I was not confident in that one at all. We're going to go to Michael Givens. He goes and gets the save. George Springer, you are a legend. And we're taking on the Dodgers in the World Series. So, obviously, Castillo is not going to be pitching for this one. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Garrett Cole up, though. Um, Trevor Williams is struggling in the postseason. We're going to move... We're going to move him to the five spot. He's really struggling this postseason. Let's get Garrett Cole on the mound. Maybe even move Luis Castillo like into this spot. I feel like that's decent. All right. Here we go. Baltimore, Los Angeles Dodgers. We lose the first game 6-0. We lose the second one. We win the third. Okay. And we're facing elimination here. Can we do it? I mean, like, this is this is insane. The Orioles are in the World Series. We're going to put Garrett Cole on the mound. Everyone's standard. They got Victor Robles. Everybody else is a normal Dodger. But Victor Robles in center? Okay. I mean, we're facing Kershaw. This is going to be a really tough matchup. Osuna comes in with the homer, though. We got to hold him out. Come on. No runs for our opponent here. Trey Mancini with another home run. That's what I like. No, Jock Peterson, please. No. 
our two run lead is gone just like that and then cody bellinger hmm okay there's one back dwight smith jr comes in okay come on all right eighth inning can we do it Garrett Cole's pitching really good, but just to be safe, we're going to go to a lefty Blyer here. And Blyer does his job perfect. All right, Kenley versus Abreu. Fly out. Osuna, Renato Nunez. That's the season. But overall, hey, they both teams made the postseason. The Orioles made the World Series. And uh, I think we're in a good spot. So we're definitely going to be making some changes. It looks like we have a postseason MVP. Yeah, um, George Springer. I mean, he did hit a very clutch home run to keep us in the uh, in the mix. So going forward, not worried about coaches. I feel like the the Marlins, I guess, were the worst team between the two. Um, exclusive negotiations. Looking at it, I feel like we have to bring back VR. Um, George Springer. He had ten triples last year. I didn't even notice that he. It's one more season. I feel like we got to bring back these two. Maybe Garrett Richards as well. And then when we look at first baseman, I want to bring him back, but I want to see if we can find maybe use the money somewhere else. It's not, especially since we're, we're not using Jake Lamb. So I guess maybe we just bring back those four. Um, so let, let's offer these guys some contracts. That's what I was worried about. I had a feeling we we're going to have to offer a lot of like some big time money, which is what I was, you know, like, oh, no, I don't know if we can afford these guys. Garrett Richards. I'm going to hold off on Garrett Richards. I'm going to hold off on Abreu and Lamb as well. Let's take a look at the Marlins. Brad Hand. I'm going to let walk. And I'm. Oh, how did he do? He did it. He didn't do bad. I'm going to offer him a one year deal as well. There's that. So those are our exclusive negotiations. We're going to sim it to the actual free agency. Osuna has um, accepted his option for the Orioles. So he'll be there next season. Betances will be joining the Marlins again next year. So that's good. And moving into this, let's take a look for the Marlins. Arbitration-wise, I mean, everybody, everybody's going to get it for the Marlins. Um, Contract-wise, everybody's going to get one from the Marlins as well. When we look at the Orioles, um, Carnes probably won't. Miguel Castro is a player who actually pitched above his overall, so he might be a player I look to bring back just in case we need a bullpen arm. Severino is not coming back because we, we have ample like catching support. And then when we look at contracts, everybody's going to get a contract here. So there's that. Offseason's going to be... Uh, it's going to be tough because I definitely want to bring in the right pieces for the Marlins and the Orioles. Let's see what we can do. All right, it's the make or break year for the Orioles and the Marlins. I feel like we're in a good spot, but I think we could get a little bit better. So with the Orioles, I'll give you a, I'll give you a quick look at what we're working with. I'll make myself a little bit smaller so you can actually see the lineup. We brought up a couple of prospects, Mountcastle and Rutschman. But the big addition here was Jack Peterson for first base. I know more power right so overall i like the team quentin abraham's kind of our bench bat along with mount castle and uh dwight smith jr big question mark is going to be the bullpen dylan tate i want to replace along with maybe paul fry i do i, I just really want to find another bullpen arm for this team we brought in mike minor to replace garrett richards for those two pitchers when we look at the marlins now Everything else is everything is basically the same except for we brought in Robbie Erlin to be uh, another lefty. We'll have to wait and see. Lineup wise, it's basically the same. Stephen Harris is gonna kind of flip flop for the left field spot. I didn't really think we needed to do much. I felt like offensively we were very very good. So for that trade, we're gonna trade Dylan Tate, DJ Stewart, and Jack Reinheimer for Robert Stevenson of the Reds. Just a good little long reliever. I think he'll fill the spot. Alrighty, I want to find another arm. We're going to go to Michael Walker. I know we just found a, a long reliever, but um, it's another really strong bullpen arm for Paul Fry, Miguel Castro, and Adamar Rafaela. Rif, Rafaela? Rafaela? Um, so overall, I feel like it may not be the, the smartest of moves to have two decent long relievers, um, but I still think it's, it's better than just going out and finding someone that we could use instead. 
Um, I tried to find other strong bullpen arms, and I just really didn't like any of the options available with the players I was trying to trade. Michael Walker, he's got really good per nines. I think it'll fit that role decently. So overall, I'm pretty comfortable with the bullpen now. Alrighty, I know. What is it? It's not a rebuild without Paul DeYoung. We got a new second baseman. We're going to move Hassan Diaz to the bench for Austin Dean, Tristan Pompey, and then um, Joe Dunnan. Alrighty, trade deadline, season three. All right, so I want to trade Dallas Keuchel. We're going to get someone a little bit better in Hyunjin Ryu. Also for Chris Zavala, who I think was a second year or first year draft pick. So there's one arm. I do want to still find a bullpen arm, so I'm going to be on the lookout for that. Ross Stripling and the player we acquired from the Cardinals last year, Mirandi Gonzalez, is going to be traded to the Reds for Matt Bowman. So I guess I got it wrong. I guess I needed one more piece. We'll throw in Roger Isaacs. There we go. All right, hopping over to the Orioles now. We're going to be acquiring Archie Bradley of the Red Sox now for Tanner Scott, Steve Ciszek, and Keith Mayers. All right, I'm going to take a chance with Kyle Baraclaw. He's having a really good year. He's actually had two back-to-back -back really solid seasons. We need some bull bullpen help. There it is. We traded Richie Martin and Rio Ruiz for him. All right, Andres Munoz hasn't really turned out to be the pitcher I was hoping he would. Evan Phillips and Josh Rogers are going to be making way for Keenan Middleton. His stats look really good. I hope he pans out for us. So offensively, I still feel really comfortable with the way the Orioles are looking. And then when we look at the pitching rotation, now I feel a lot stronger with the way the rotation and the bullpen look. It, it just looks really solid. When we hop over to the Marlins now... Again, I feel very comfortable with the way everything looks. It may not be the best in terms of bullpen, but starting rotation looks really, really solid. And the lineup, we made a couple changes. We brought up Jesus Sanchez. That really was the big one. I thought about bringing up Lewin Diaz, but I, I think we'll be okay for now. I think we will. Maybe we even start Jesus Sanchez. That might be the move. We'll see. But for right now, this is how it's going to play out. I like the way the teams are looking, and I think we only made them stronger heading into the postseason. Alrighty, so I've seen what the Orioles have done because they're the ones that popped up. I haven't seen what the Marlins have done, so that's that's a bit worrying. But we made the postseason as a wild card team, 96 and 66, taking on the Astros, and the Marlins are a wild card team as well, 93 and 69. Nice, taking on the the Giants. So let's take look, take a look at these league leaders. Stolen bases for VR. Garrett Cole, Mike Miner have some decent little league leading stats there. We'll take a look at the awards. We got Mike Miner and Jack Peterson were gold glovers. Um, overall, I, I feel like it went well. How, how much did we miss the... Oh, wow. We missed it by 15 games. Oh, okay. I guess that makes a little bit more sense now. And then we had the number one spot in the wild card. So let's take a look. See how those changes helped us, didn't help us. But when we look at the lineup... Or the starting rotation, I should say. I'm pretty happy with the way things went. Mike Miner was a great addition in that five spot. I mean, really solid overall for, I mean, every pitcher. Really, Trevor Williams was the weak link. You know, and even he with a 1.26 whip, I'm not going to freak out. I mean, still very, very good year. Especially Mike Miner. Holy cow. Really good. Michael Walker was a bit of a disappointment, which sucks because he was having a really solid year before we picked him up. And then we pick him up and he sucks. So, like I said, that does suck. Who did they send down? Sean Gilmartin. Why? How bad did he do? Pretty bad. All right. So that makes sense. Keenan Middleton. Amazing. Great pickup. Uh, Robert Stevenson struggled a little bit in the bullpen. Kyle Baraclaw did very well. Archie Bradley. Perfect. Richard Blyer is probably going to be out of this spot. And then we got Michael Givens who did, you know, a suitable job in the, in the closing spot. When we look at our lineups... Our bench bats are pretty lackluster. We do have Dwight Smith Jr. who looked like he did quite well. Um, VR did very good. 23 home runs. He's been very consistent for us. Good amount of home runs. Good amount of RBIs. Doubles have been high up. Good triples. I mean, he had 44 stolen bases, which is good. Aledmus Diaz. I mean, what a pickup. 45 doubles this year. Crazy. Trey Mancini has been amazing for us. Great year. Career year for him this season. 33 doubles along with 43 home runs and 115 RBIs. Jock Peterson was great for us this season. Solid. 35 doubles, 35 home runs, 90 RBIs. I want to see that for my first baseman. Marcelo Zuna has been clutch. 30, 30 doubles, good amount of home runs, RBIs. Like He's been a good pickup for us. So overall, it's looking like the players that we do have are putting up really good offensive numbers. Even Adley Rutschman did very well. So for the Orioles, it looks like the bullpen was a little bit of a down, a downer for this year. That I feel like that's what really let them down. Um, when it came when it came to it so when we look at the Orioles now 
No league leaders, but it does look like we got an award. Alfaro won the gold glove. They lost by a game. They missed out on the division by a game. And they were the best in the wild card by pff, six games. Jesus. So look at let's look at pitching. See how things went. Marquez, great. Clevenger, great. Hinjin Ryu, great. S Caleb Smith, meh. And then Pablo Lopez was pretty solid. So it's looking like Caleb Smith would be more of our fifth starter. Robbie Erlin moved to the long relief role. Great. Amazing. Amazing, actually. Carl looks like he's found his stride. Steckenrider, disappointing. Bowman was good. Brebbia was good. Batances was decent. Um, and then Jordan Hicks. I mean, overall, everyone was like in the threes except for Steckenrider, which is great to see. I love to see that everybody was, you know, like what we needed them to be. Jordan Hicks struggled a little bit. Um, 10 blown saves is kind of high. The whip at 1.6 is a little worrisome. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the, the bullpen did. And it looks like they sent someone down. They sent down Alex Claudio. Why? Do not. No, 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 no. 2.7 ERA and you sent him down? I am sorry. Who did they bring up? Who did they bring up? Puelo? I don't want Puelo. Puelo was not doing good for us. I want him sent down. Like that. I made that change for a reason. Alex Claudio needs to be in the lineup. There's no reason to have Cesar Puelo. Um. God, I hate I hate when the CPU does this. We need Claudio. He was very, very good. Very, very good. We need him in the lineup. Especially because we need that lefty, that extra lefty. So let's remove Huelo. Let's get into it now. Let's take a look at the lineup, see how things went. So bench-wise, it was okay. Nothing special. Jesus Sanchez really didn't do as well as I would have hoped. But Ketel Marte, 300 average. Good amount of home runs. Good amount of doubles. Decent RBIs. That's what I want in my leadoff hitter. Castellanos is always a glitch in um franchise crazy amount of doubles good home runs rbis average on base percentage etc just what you want polanco same thing a glitch he just does the same thought same thing as what castellanos does home runs rbis doubles average on base percentage slugging ops you name it he's got it so no home runs and rbis paul de Jong, home runs and rbis good amount of doubles as well i didn't even realize last year he hit 53 he wasn't on the team but it still did quite well our Faro for a catcher is putting up really good numbers. His potential has also gone up. So overall, pretty happy with it. Steven Harris has been a letdown. But when you have low vision and discipline, it's going to hurt you. I mean, 15 home runs is not terrible. But that average is pretty gross. Brian Anderson is good. And Harold Ramirez did, did decent. I mean, the home runs and RBIs aren't really his game. Obviously, he's missed out on 100 at-bats. But overall, I'm still pretty happy with the, the run production that he did do. Probably could have traded like... Lede or Brinson or Herrera or any other guy who had potential that we didn't use to get an even better squad but this is what we're working with I'm pretty I'm liking it so far so how are we going to do this Be oh, okay perfect so the Marlins play before the Orioles so let's get into it let's let's do the the Marlins first Marlins Park we're going to throw Marquez out there against these Giants. What do they got? Marte, Mitch Hanniger's new, Chad Pinder. Okay, all righty. So we're going against Pudge's son. We got to score. Come on, there we go. Steven Harris, just as I'm saying, he's garbage. What does he do? He gives us a two-run lead. I like to see that. And, uh, okay, let's not let them score. Come on, there we go. Runners on the corners. Can Marquez do it? No, he can't, and neither can Marte. And now Buster Posey goes deep. Are you serious? Really? And it is a, a deficit. Man. Are we really going to let... Stephen Harris. Who is this man? Who is this man? We were saying so much garbage by him. I should have taken out Marquez, by the way. Um, let's go to Brevia. I feel confident in him. Perfect. All right, Castellanos. Come on, let me see one of those patented doubles. Maybe not. All right, cool. There's Sano with the double, though. Okay. Brian Anderson in the eighth. Can we do something here? Steven Harris. Who is this guy? Three for four on the day. Double play. Why did you have to do that, Alfaro? Um, let's go to Isan Diaz. I feel comfortable with him. And he gets out. Unfortunate. So ninth inning. We'll go to... 
guess we'll go Batansis here. See if he can hold the lead. He does. Not. He doesn't. Batansis. Why must you hurt me like that? Why must you hurt me like that? <sighs> Batansis. 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 All right. So Marlin's season's done. We're going to hop into the Orioles now, and we're going to make sure that they go farther than the Marlins, who were let down by the one, the only, Dellen Betances. So the Astros, not going to be an easy matchup. Uh, looks like they have Travis Shaw as a new addition. Uh, Perez at catcher. I think it's Michael Perez. Overall, um, Still a really solid team. They have Tehran taking the mound, which if you're telling me there, that's the ace for you guys, we better not lose. Base is loaded for Nunez. Rutschman, thank you very much. We get a run out of that situation. Guys, like, come on. We cannot. We're going against Julio Tehran. We cannot, like, just not score 47 runs this, this game, which is, you know, we're just looking bad on offense. We're letting Julio Tehran take us apart. Why? 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 All right. Comes down to this. Not really, but there we go. George Springer gets us within two. Garrett Cole is going to give me one more inning, which he does. <sighs> we got six outs. That's a good start. Can we get second out of it? We can. And then Aledmiz Diaz comes back to hurt his former team. And I like to see that. All right. Pitching change. Lefties galore. We're going to go to Blyer. <sighs> well then that's the rebuild unfortunately we uh we didn't make it past the wild card for either team the orioles did make it to the world series though so that's kind of a win and i mean when you look at the lineups i'll, I'll pull them back up i mean for the orioles I, I, it's a good team. When you only score, what was it, three runs against Julio Tehran? I feel like you're you're letting your. Hold on. When you're scoring three or four runs against Julio Tehran, I feel like you're letting your team down a lot. So Garrett Cole, you didn't do too poorly. You guys really let him down. You know that's that's a this is a lineup that should be scoring like ten runs a game. This is a scary lineup. Um, and then the Marlins. Marquez was a little iffy. Marquez was a little iffy. Overall, though, I feel like, again, this should be a team that puts up a good amount of runs. When, you're, when your first three hitters go 0 for 19, 14, when your first four hitters go 0 for 14, you know there's something wrong. Um, so, yeah, Stephen Harris was the reason why we were in that game. I feel like, overall, it was pretty disappointing by both offenses. For both teams in this postseason um orioles clearly were the better team they went to the world series last season but i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did i gotta find it like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content and in the comment section as always let me know what you guys want to see for future rebuilds or challenges or anything like that so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did again like button down below i'll catch you all in the next one peace